This video provides step-by-step -step instructions for you to create this saddle bracket using Onshape. Click below in the video description. Here you will find links to all of the resources you need to complete this project. First, there is a link for a PDF instruction sheet. Click this link and open the project drawings and specifications in a new browser tab. Next, if you don't have an Onshape account, use one of these links to create a free account at the Onshape website. Last, there are links for each of the segments of this video. The video instruction is organized into five segments. In segment one, you will read the engineering drawings. Segment two will establish the design intent. In segment three, you will create the part model using Onshape. Next, you will check the accuracy of your model by checking its mass properties. Last, you will check the design intent by making changes to the model to see if it will update correctly. Now you are ready to open Onshape and get started. We will start by reading the engineering drawing of the saddle bracket. The drawing provides all of the information we need to model the part in Onshape. First, we will identify the drawing views. This drawing contains two standard view types. First, the isometric view shows a pictorial to help us visualize the part in three dimensions. Next, the orthographic drawing shows the part in a series of flat two-dimensional drawings, representing the three principal views. In the lower left corner, the front view. Aligned above the front view, the top view. Aligned to the right of the front view, the right side view. In planning our parametric model, it is important to identify the basic shapes and features of the part. The top view shows the shape as a rectangle. It also shows a circular hole centered on this rectangle. The hidden lines in the front and side views indicate that the hole extends through the bottom of the plate. The front view shows vertical ends that appears to have the same material thickness as the bottom. The right side view shows a semicircular cutout through both ends. The part is symmetrical both left to right and front to back. Next, we will look at the dimensions and notes. First, the measurement units are in decimal inches. The material thickness is 0.5 inches. The length is 5 inches. The width is 3 inches. The height is 2.5 inches. The center hole has a diameter of 1.25 inches. The hole is centered on the part 2.5 inches from the ends and 1.5 inches from the back edge. The semicircular cutout on the ends have a radius of 1 or a diameter of 2 inches. It is noted that, that the material is HDPE plastic and the mass units are set to pounds. Before we model the part in Onshape, we have to establish our design intent. For this project, we intend our model to be flexible to possible design changes and update predictively without errors. To start, we need to identify any features that might be changed or revised during the design process. The one change could be the length, it may need to be longer or shorter. Next, we need to identify the features that should remain unchanged. In this case, the general shape and material thickness. The height will remain the same. The width will remain the same. The size and locations of the circular features should keep their size and remain centered. The part should maintain its symmetry, left to right and front to back. When creating the model, the choice and order of placing constraints will determine if the model will change predictively. And if the design intent is applied correctly, we can change the length of the saddle bracket, the holes will remain centered, and the part will update without errors. Before we create our model in Onshape, let's review the workflow that we will use. First, from the drawings, we need to identify the profile or closed shape that we'll use for the first sketch. We also need to note the isometric orientation of this profile so we can place it on the correct sketch plane. This will determine the orientation of the part in the part studio. We'll use this rectangular profile, and we'll place it on the top sketch plane. Because the part is symmetrical, we to think about how we can include the default geometry as part of the design. By placing the origin coincident to the center of the part, both the whole location and overall symmetry of the part can be maintained if the length or width is later revised. While on shape affords us multiple ways to make the same part, our process is start with sketch one on the top sketch plane. This will be our base sketch and define the length, width, hole diameter, and vertical wall thickness. It will also constrain the part and the hole to the origin at the center of the part. Extrude 1 will create our first 3D feature as defined in Sketch 1. This is the base feature. Extrude 2 will create the vertical ends, again using the base sketch. 
Sketch 2, on the right face, will define the semicircular hole. Extrude 3 will use to remove material through both ends. As each feature is created, a reference entry is added to the feature list. Each sketch and feature is listed in the order that it was created. Any of the sketches and features on this list can be reopened and changed to update the design. I've started a new on-shape document and named it Saddle Bracket. Before starting the sketch, I want to check my workspace units. Make sure the length is set to inches and the mass is set to pounds. I'll start a new sketch in this part studio. Click on the top sketch plane. Use N on the keyboard to view normal and P to turn off the visibility of the sketch planes. From the toolbar, choose center point rectangle. Click coincident to the origin to start the rectangle. Enter 5 for the length and 3 for the height. From the toolbar, select center point circle. Click coincident to the origin to set the center point of the circle. Enter 1.25 for the diameter. Next, we will create the ends. From the toolbar, choose offset. Click on end line of the rectangle. Make sure the arrow is pointing in towards the circle and hit enter on the keyboard. Enter the offset distance of 0.5 inches. Repeat the same offset on the other end. Use the green check to accept the sketch. Right-click and choose Isometric View from the keyboard. This completes the base sketch. Sketch 1 is now listed in the feature list. If I need to make changes to the size or shape information in the sketch, I can double-click and open it for editing. We can now use the center region of Sketch 1 to extrude the base feature. From the Feature toolbar, click on the Extrude tool. This will be new. Click on the region of the sketch that forms the bottom of the part without the ends. The direction should be above the sketch plane. Set the depth to 0.5 inches. Click the green check to accept and create the base part. Notice, Extrude 1 is now listed on the feature list. Next, we will use Sketch 1 again to add the ends to the base feature. Click on the Extrude tool in the toolbar. This time, we will add to the base. In the feature list, click on the eye in Sketch 1 to turn on its visibility. Click on the regions for both the ends. Set the depth at 2.5 inches. Click the green check to close. Note Extrude 2 has been added to the feature list. To cut the semicircular features from the ends, we will use a sketch. From the toolbar, click to create a new sketch. Click on the right face of the part to select it as our sketch plane. Use N to view normal to the screen. From the sketch toolbar, choose center point arc. Hover the mouse on the top edge and look for the yellow box to highlight the center point. Click to set the center of the arc, stretch to the right and click coincident to the top for one end of the arc, then click again coincident on the other side. Set the radius to one inch. Use the green check to accept. Right click and choose isometric view from the keyboard. We will now use sketch two to remove material from both ends of the part. Choose extrude from the feature toolbar. This time click on remove. Click on the region of sketch two on the right face. For the end type choose through all. This looks correct. Use the green check to accept. The saddle bracket is now complete. The feature list now lists all of the sketches and features in the order they were created. Also, we have one part in the parts list. If you were to close this document and open it again, Onshape would rebuild the part following the feature list. You can think of the feature list as the recipe for this part. In this segment, we'll check the accuracy of the model by checking its mass properties. To check the model, the mass unit should be set to pounds and the material set to HDPE plastic. If the size and shape of your model was completed accurately, the mass should be 0.385. Let's look at this process step by step. First, open the document that contains the model of the saddle bracket. Next, check the workspace units and make sure that mass was set to pounds. Next, set the material to HDPE. Go to the part in the parts list. Right-click and choose Assign Material. In this case, we're searching for HDPE. 
click to select it. Next, go down to the lower right corner and click on the Display Mass Properties button. When the dialog box opens, click on the part, and the display shows a mass of 0.385 pounds. If this was your result, then your part is accurate and matches the specifications. If not, we can troubleshoot to locate the step where you made an error. First, locate the rollback bar in the feature list. We're going to remove all of the features back to extrude 1 and check the mass property there. Move the rollback bar to just below extrude 1. The mass property should now read 0.183 pounds. If your value doesn't match, you have made an error on the base feature. Check for errors in extrude 1 or sketch 1. If the value is correct, move the rollback bar to just below extrude 2. The mass should now be 0.438 pounds. If your value doesn't match, you have made an error on the size of the ends. Look in sketch 1 or extrude 2. If the value is correct, move the rollback bar to the end. The mass should now be 0.385 pounds. If it is not correct now, your error is with the size of the end cutouts. Check in sketch 2 or extrude 3. If your part is still not correct, check that the material is set to the HDPE plastic. In this segment, we will make some revisions to the saddle bracket. We will start by reading the revision drawings to find which features need to be changed. First, the length has increased from 5 to 8 inches. When revised, all other features should remain as original and the part should remain symmetrical. You can check your revised part. It should have a mass of 0.538 pounds. I know that the dimensions that need changes are in sketch 1, so double click to open it up for editing. Double click on the dimension for the length and change to 8 inches. To see what this change will look like, use the final button to preview the result. Click on the green check to accept. With the revisions complete, let's check the mass properties now. It should be 0.538 pounds. If your result matches this, you have revised the part accurately.